we're on. Well, good morning. It looks like we've already got 17 people joining in. Oh, but we're up to 18. So the ones I can see, so good morning, Jenny, Diane, I see Jeff, Maria, Kim, All right. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So happy Flag Day. Did you remember that today is Flag Day? Because it is June 14th. So I'm wearing my patriotic um, outfit a little bit. And I got a necklace on that we made um, yesterday at Matthews where I'm working. And later this afternoon at 2 o'clock, we're going to have a Flag Day parade. And I've been telling my residents at Matthews that we're probably the only place around um, the area that's probably going to have a Flag Day parade because the parade that they usually would hold up in Appleton has been canceled. So on this um, day, how about we begin um, our service this morning with a prayer um, called Before Worship. God of grace, you have given us minds to know you hearts to love you, and voices to sing your praise. Fill us with your spirit, that we may celebrate your glory and worship you in spirit and truth through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let everyone say amen. Amen. 
And so we begin this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved in the name of Jesus Christ. Your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Let everyone say amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. And now let us pray. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts that overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let everyone say amen. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from Exodus, the 19th chapter. They had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. 
Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. The second reading this morning comes from Romans. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves God's love for us in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. And this is word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. And now the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the ninth ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon, the Cananean. And Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to the councils and flog you in their synagogues. And you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you at that time. 
For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated all because of my name, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. And this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, now I want to turn to a little sermon. I, I really like imagery, and I, I like to um, have things that um, remind me of my faith in Jesus. And one image that I really like is rocks. And um, I, I love to work outside in my garden, and I did not realize that um, when I first moved to Wisconsin that digging up rocks in your yard or in your garden, that that was probably going to be a given. And so I would spend hours just digging in my garden, finding rocks. And um, a lot of the rocks that are in my flower beds and stuff at home are rocks that I've dug out from somewhere. And so um, I want to encourage you um, this week to find some kind of an image that reminds you of God's love for you in Jesus. And perhaps it's a rock. And um, rocks, um, there's a group on Facebook that does painting of rocks in the Fox Valley and then they leave them in places. Perhaps you want to um, paint rocks and share them with people um, to share God's love in Jesus. But um, find some kind of image and keep it close that reminds you of your faith in Jesus. And with that, I'm going to turn now to um, Romans. I, this passage from Romans 5 is one of my favorite passages of Scripture. Um, Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings. We boast in our sufferings. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't always like to boast when I'm suffering or when things aren't going right in my life. And yet, the Apostle Paul suggests that we boast in our suffering. So what exactly does that mean? What exactly does that look like? The text goes on to say, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. And here's why. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. So God's love is poured into us, and God's love is always there for us. And our assurance of God's love for us is the fact that Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. And it is in and through the cross and the empty tomb that we are reminded that we are not alone. And that in the midst of our sufferings, God in Jesus Christ is there with us, giving us support and strength and nourishment and encouragement to keep living each day. And it is because of Christ that we can boast in the midst of our sufferings. We can live in and through the difficulties in our life. We can keep pushing forward, knowing that at one point, the pain in our life 
the struggle in our life that it is going to lift. And then we are going to be free. The text goes on to say, for while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us, and that while we were but God proves his love for us in that while we were sin still were sinners, Christ died for us. Let me try that again. I had a little trouble getting that out of my mouth. But God proves his love for us in that while still we were sinners, Christ died for us. And that's a really important part of this text. The but... Um, as I've come to know in the English language, can be um, known as a negating conjunction. And that what comes after the but is the most important thing. And so in this case, we are reminded that God proves God's love for us by sending the Son into the world to live and to die. And that death was not the final word that God spoke the final word of love that God spoke is that the stone was rolled away. That great big rock, that great big boulder was rolled away and Jesus had conquered the grave. And that is the good news that we have in and through Christ. That no matter what happens to us in this life, Christ walks and lives and breathes with us. And so just cling to that promise and like I encouraged the kids earlier, and I encourage all of you, find a rock. A rock can remind you of the fact that the stone was rolled away. Oh, um, now I'm just reading Maria's thing. Anyone else's video skipping? Ooh, that sounds like a problem. Well, hang in there despite that and cling to the cross and the empty tomb. And with that, I'm going to say amen. Well, it says Jenny's not having a problem with it skipping, but Diane's is freezing up and somebody else's is fine. Oh, the world of technology, right? I wish I could help solve that problem, but I can't. So just hang in there the best you can with the technology that we have. And at this time, um, let's join together in saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Our response this morning will be hear our prayer. Give wisdom and grace to all pastors and deacons and to those who hold office in your church that by their faithful service faith may abound and your kingdom increase. Be with us in the midst of this COVID-19 epidemic. It's crazy times that we live in. 
pastors, deacons, and um, church leaders are leading in the midst of a time that they've never dealt with before. And so God, we seek your wisdom and grace, especially as it comes um, to decisions about reopening our buildings. Help us to discern what is best. And so now, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Preserve our nation in justice and honor, that we may lead a peaceable life of integrity. Grant health and favor to all who bear office in our land, and help them to serve this people according to your holy will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Take from us all hatred and prejudice. Give us the spirit of love, and dispose our days in your peace. Prosper the labors of those who take counsel for the nations of the world, that mutual stand, understanding and common endeavor may be increased among all peoples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let your blessing rest upon the seed time and harvest, the commerce and industry, the leisure and rest, the arts and culture of our people. Take under your special protection those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and be with all who lay their hands to any useful task. Give them just rewards for their labor and the knowledge that their work is good in your sight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort with the grace of your Holy Spirit all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity, Remember those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those to whom death draws near. And at this time, I invite you to share aloud or silently those for whom you wish to pray this morning. Bring consolation to those in sorrow or mourning, and to all a great measure of your love, taking them into your tender care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you in your church on earth and who now rest from their labors. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints and bring us at last to the joy of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else that you see that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let everyone say amen. Amen. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts. Freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. 
For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Let everyone say amen. Amen. And now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, um, as I bring our service this morning um, to a close, I want to say happy Flag Day one more time to you all. But I also want to say thank you to those um, who are listening or who will be listening. Um, I just want to say thanks to those who have served um, our country and who have served in the military. And I want to say thanks to those who are um, veterans. And if you want, if that happens to be you, feel free in the comments to share with us what branch of the armed services you are a part of. Um, I think being amongst my residents at Matthew Senior Living of Nina, um, I've really come to see how important it is to recognize um, our veterans. Um, and those who are currently serving um, in the military. And so Flag Day is a day, one day that we can um, do this along with other days throughout the year. So thank you to those who have served us in this capacity. So I wish you all a wonderful week. Um, hang in there in the midst of this virus that's going on. Um, stay away from Corona. That's what my mantra is. Stay away from it as best you can. And um, at this time, please hear this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And thanks to those who are sharing. I see Peter was in the Navy and Corky was in the Army. So keep sharing those things. I'll look at them uh, as we go forth this week and I'll see you next Sunday. Have a great week, everybody.